Hey Weather Geeks, welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. It is Wednesday evening and I'm 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm. Here it is late October. It's oftentimes a changeable time of the year and we do have some changes in our weather coming over the next several days, but nothing all that dramatic really. It could be a lot more dramatic, if you will, at this time of the year. Today was a blustery day and I, I mentioned to Andrew when I walked in uh, today, I, you know, I kind of think a lot of us passed our peak foliage of the uh, season today because there was so much uh, leaf, so much of a leaf drop today with the, the wind gusts of 20 to 30 miles per hour. My yard was covered in leaves after just a few hours of breezy weather for the midday hours uh, today. So it may be that we've uh, passed our, our kind of peak uh, fall colors now that a lot of the leaves are starting to fall. And, you know, we're heading out of the time of the year in which we're kind of in the summertime doldrums. There's usually not much wind outside of thunderstorms during the summer and early in the fall season, but there's usually a pronounced uptick in the wind speeds uh, as you go from September to October and then again from October to November. But this October has been a little bit different. This graphic shows you uh, this month's wind speeds compared to average, which is this black line up here. We've been below average almost every day in terms of wind speeds. And it kind of makes sense, right? It's been a pretty quiet month. We've had a lot of high pressure overhead, a lot of quiet weather, uh, no big wound up low pressure systems cruising through the Great Lakes just yet. Um, and so it kind of makes sense that it hasn't been particularly windy. Uh, but we had a breezy day today, and we'll have uh, maybe a couple of breezy days coming up uh, next week as well. But uh, starting tomorrow, the wind is not going to be much of a story for a handful of days as another fresh area of high pressure builds in from the uh, west. In the meantime, I wanted to show you a couple of uh, high-resolution satellite pictures. This one was taken uh, this week showing the kind of ruddy-looking landscape as you can kind of pick out uh, the time of the year it is by looking at this, this satellite view. You, you have a lot of you know, fall foliage being picked up on a clear day on this satellite. Compared to this to a month ago, this is the way the same picture looked about a month ago. A lot greener, of course, before foliage season really kicked in. So yeah, it's that time of the year that you can even see the fall colors from outer space. How about this? We have a few actual raindrops on the radar this evening. A cold front is heading our way, and there's two kind of distinct areas of showers, even some claps of thunder, and a few bolts of lightning as of this recording at 7.08 p.m., Let's zoom in on our local area here, and we're going to just touch on this briefly. Most of you will be watching this well after 7.08 p.m., of course. But at that point, we did have a thunder shower uh, along the Carroll-Columbiana line. We've had a couple of claps of thunder over towards New Wilmington, over towards Slippery Rock as well. And there's been a few thunderstorms up over Lake Erie over the last couple of hours. And, you know, I can't rule out maybe one or two more claps of thunder and bolts of lightning before the evening is through. But by far and away, the best chance for raindrops will be early this evening before about 9 p.m. Now this cold front means some business. It's, you know, it's not the most dramatic late October cold front in the world, but it is going to put a halt to the early September-like weather we've had over the last couple of days. 24-hour temperature change numbers, 10 to 15 degrees, even close to 20 degrees cooler than the same time yesterday. Once you go up towards the U.S.-Canada border, and uh, yeah, so tomorrow is definitely going to be more October-like. We'll start out with a few fair weather uh, lake effect and lake enhanced clouds, but as high pressure nudges in from the west, the air will dry out. We'll have a bright and sunny end to our Thursday afternoon, crystal clear at sunset Thursday evening, and we'll get off to a cold and clear start Friday morning. But clouds will increase fairly quickly before the morning is through on Friday. And I do think as this next front approaches, we've got a shot at seeing a few showers as we get into the second half of the uh, day. Small chance of thunder as well. And while this is not going to be much rain, might there be an annoying shower around for some high school football games Friday evening? I think that's a possibility. This front won't really cross the area probably until about sunset or shortly thereafter Friday evening. And then clouds will break for some sunshine Saturday morning, leaving us with a crisp but bright weekend overall. Friday Night Football forecast, it's the last week of the regular season. And, you know, we haven't had too many uh, kind of lousy weather nights for high school football this year we had uh, one night early in the season where we had some lightning and thunder i don't think we'll have anything like that this year or this week i should say but there could be a shower here and there mid uh, to you know early to mid evening i'll say and then decreasing chances by the time we get into the second half of our games all right some warmth is coming next week now i don't think we'll flirt with 80 next week but we might flirt with a record at next uh, that would be a week from today that's next wednesday the record that day, I think, is 75 degrees, so that's low-hanging fruit. Halloween, the day after, may not be quite as warm. We have a front that'll probably approach on Halloween. 
nonetheless a chance that we're going to have our warmest Halloween in over 20 years if temperatures reach at least the upper 60s, uh, maybe even 70 or so if that front slows down a little bit for Halloween. But the day before Halloween, you know, it's looking like a lead pipe lock at this point that it's going to be quite toasty. After that, a little bit of a cool down, but I don't see any sort of dramatic long long lived or substantial cool downs really until probably we get into that second week of November. Wanted to wrap up this evening with more winter forecast chat. And yeah, you know, I'm gonna show you a complicated looking graphic here, but I'll break this down. Uh, you may know at this point that we're heading into a, a winter season in which La Nina is uh, taking shape across the Pacific Ocean. Last winter we had El Nino. Before that we had three straight winters with La Nina. La Nina is back this winter, it's probably going to be a fairly weak La Nina. Not real impressed with how this thing is is transpiring thus far as we get into middle fall. What does La Nina or El Nino typically mean for our winter season around here? Well, this graphic kind of sums it all up. And again, this is a little complicated looking, but I'll break this down. All the dots on this graphic over here that are kind of red or orange, those are El Nino winters. All the ones that are yellow to green, especially green, uh, those are La Nina winters. The top half of the graph up here, uh, those are warmer than average winters. The bottom half of the graph are the colder than average winters. And then on the left-hand side of the graph over here, those are all the drier than average winters. And on the right-hand side of the graph, those are all the wetter than average winters. The strongest La Ninas are the circles that are dark green. The weaker ones are more pale green, almost yellow. Again, this year we're kind of expecting a fairly weak La Nina. Does that tell us anything about the upcoming winter. Well, when we look back at history, a lot of these yellow to pale green dots, you know, they're kind of all over the place. You know, you got a few down here, you got a few up here. You don't have a lot of pale green dots in this quadrant, a, a uh, colder than average and uh, drier than average winter. That's kind of uh, the least likely outcome when we look at uh, recorded uh, history. Uh, I should say a, a cooler than average winter and a wetter than average winter. I got that a little backwards. Cooler than average, wetter than average. That's the least likely outcome um, when you look back at history for weak La Ninas. The most likely outcome is probably something up here where we see a lot of green clustered. And that would be temperatures on either side of, of average, but probably a little above average. And precipitation on either side of average almost equally dispersed. And so I would take away from this graphic that a weak La Nina tilts the odds a little bit in favor of a warmer than average winter with the precipitation outcome a little more unclear. There's you know, quite a variety there. But there's a lot of other things we look at when we make a winter forecast, including uh, not only the strength of La Nina or El Nino, but also where in the Pacific specifically we have the coldest waters compared to the average. What are the water temperatures in the Northern Pacific, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean? What's going on in the stratosphere way above our heads? We even look at sunspots and all sorts of stuff like that. And we'll break all that down, of course, when we do my annual winter forecast coming up in less than three weeks now on Monday, November the 11th. A lot to talk about between now and then, and including, of course, that video always is a long one, and I'm sure it will be again this year. In the meantime, Weather Geeks, thanks for watching once again on this Wednesday evening. Have a great rest of your night. Let's do it again on Thursday.